all right guys today you know what oversimplified made a new video that you guys saw of course it's oversimplified everyone watches him um so in the spirit of french history we're gonna go ahead and watch a timeline of the rulers of france so let's go ahead and just dive right in this will be showing every king emperor and president of france so yeah go ahead dive right in um so I'm curious to see the changing of the borders here um, from the Valois family being the first. Oh, no. Roy de France, Roy de Paris. Well, I'm going to mute this because I think. Okay, so these are the family names. Okay, so these are the Vizic Franks. 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 They're not the Vizigoths. I don't understand that family name, Roy de Paris. I've never heard that. I don't think I've heard that before. Roy de Franc. I love how you can so like you will very it'll become very obvious this transition from Frankish to French in their names. Like you've got Clotaire, Clovis, Childeric, Thierry. Thierry. Thierry's kind of French. Um Childebert, like these are very kind of Germanic names uh still and god it's so crazy how big france was in the early days like how much they ruled like, they were into germany uh, charles martel mer du palais and now we're starting to get into the french with pepin the breath the breath louis the first le puy yeah, we're in this transition to French now. Because Charles, Le Chauve, Louis II, Le Beg. <laughs> Louis III and Carloman II. Oh, yeah, they ruled together. Okay, I know that a little bit. And then after Charles III, we see France has shrunk to just Western France. Because, you know, Eastern and then Central or something. Or three three Frankish kingdoms or I guess one French kingdom and two Frankish descent kingdoms if that's how you want to word it they conquered Brittany by now under uh, Louis the fourth Hugh Capet I know that name kind of a little bit man really stagnant borders here with France for a good while now I'm Okay, so they're not counting England as part of France at this time. Despite, I think, at least under William the Conqueror, I think, I think technically England was under France under William of Normandy. I think. I could be wrong. Feel free to correct me. Oh, and then we have the Hundred Years, you know, England owns a lot of land during Louis the Seventh's reign. And then Philippe kind of gets it back a little bit for a while. Um, you know, they have Normandy under their rule again, but they've lost Aquitaine under Saint-Louis. Or well, under Louis VIII, it looks like. Actually, they lost parts of Aquitaine and then lost more under Saint-Louis. Um, up, they have Navarre under Philip IV. Is he, Philip IV is the one that... Was he the one that uh, killed the Templars? I think that's him. I think that's the right person. Because I think it was early 1300s that happened. God, what the fuck, Jean the First? <laughs> Philippe the Fifth. Charles the Fourth. Philippe the, se the Sixth. Up, oh, they've gained a little bit under Philip the Sixth. They've regained a little bit of Aquitaine, southern France. And then under Jean the Second, they fucking lost it. And then under Charles V, they got it back. And then under Charles VI, they lost everything. And then under Charles VII, they got it back. And now France is starting to have the borders back. But another thing that's interesting to note here under Louis the Ninth, no, eleventh, um, is Avignon. Avignon is not part of France because that is currently still under the Pope. Actually, I think there still might be a Pope in France. 
Is this during the schism? Where there were like three different popes? I don't know what time that was. But yeah, we got Henry II, Francois. Lots of Charles. Um, yeah, the Hundred Years' War is done and gone by now. Uh, way done and gone because it's the 1500s. And then we've got some expansion into Germany and uh, Belgium. And then here under Louis the Fifteenth, we are seeing uh, modern France borders. And then I think under Louis the Sixteenth, this looks like modern French borders to me. Maybe a little bit more to Belgium. Up oh, the convention. Oh God, yeah, the fucking changing of the of the government so often. The Directoire. Ooh, this is this is interesting. So under Napoleon. They're counting what, I guess, France had after his death? Or, well, after his defeat at Waterloo. They're not counting his empire at its greatest extent. Okay. Sorry about the sniffling. Allergies are messing me up today. Hold on, Napoleon III. So they're going to count... This is a little weird to me. Um... I don't know if you guys can see it. I'll let it move past a little more. But here under Napoleon III, um, this is the war against Germany, I think. Um, this is this is how much they lost. They didn't lose this territory, though. Like, France, after the war, German unification, got this land back, except they did have to cede Alsace-Lorraine. They, they still own... So this is a little... That's a little weird to me. And now we're starting to see the colonization of French colonial holdings, even though... Yeah, okay, so this video is a little weird. Um, because France had colonial holdings under the monarchies. And they weren't shown at all. So that's that's a little, little weird. Um, I don't really like it. Um, it's kind of... You know, brushing over French colonial holdings and how long they've actually had a lot of their colonial holdings. Um, but yeah, now we're in the presidents. Uh, pretty pretty basic, you know. It's just presidents, you know. Um, I am curious to see how they're gonna do World War Two if they're gonna. Okay, so they're gonna do Philippe Pétain. All right, so they're going with Vichy France and then Charles de Gaulle after World War. You know, this is a thing that you then have to ask yourself. Is this video then saying that Philippe Pétain's French government was the legitimate French government? Or was Charles de Gaulle's Free France the legitimate French government? Because, you know, it was fighting against fascism. So that, like, that would change this map here. Then Charles de Gaulle comes back for a bit. I think this is during... I think during this timeline was when Algeria rebelled and there was some issues there. Pompidou, what a fucking name. Yeah, and then the borders here of France aren't going to change at all. Yeah, we're just going to 1995, huh? Ending with Francois Mitterrand. Okay. Um. Oh, wait, wait. Okay, we're going to the last four people. All right, just like we did with the monarchy, I guess. Jacques Chirac, Sarkozy, that does not, that sounds like a Polish name or something, that's what Holland, and then Emmanuel Macron, all right, all right, so I talked about my issues with the video while it was playing, um, yeah, I think, I think it should have been included, the colonial holdings under the monarchies, uh, it was a little weird that they weren't. Um, and I think for consistency's sake, I think it would have been better then to just focus only on France for even the presidents and not include their colonial holdings since you didn't include the col colonial holdings that they had under the monarchies. Um, so, yeah. Um, but this was the timeline of the rulers of France by Cotero. I hope you guys enjoyed. Remember to hit that like button and subscribe for more. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.